Hi, I'm Coda. I'm so excited to be here. I'm a coder on a training assignment, and I am your friend in education as you learn the world of HIM and coding. In this class, we are going to explore the world of ICD-10 CM coding. ICD-10 CM coding is the diagnosis coding used in the United States to report diagnosis codes in all facets of healthcare. When using the ICD-10 CM coding manual, we first need to understand the components. There's an alphabetical index where we look up the terms we are coding and a tabular list where we verify the code number we found in the alphabetical index. When coding in ICD-10 CM, we use the alphabetical index to look up our diagnosis code. The diagnosis main term would be the name of the disease, a noun, or condition, such as fracture. In the alphabetical index, we can also look up an eponym. An eponym is the name of a disease, condition, or procedure that is named after a person, such as Lou Gehrig's or Alzheimer's. So with the example of Alzheimer's, we would then flip to G30.9 in the tabular section, the middle section of the book. Once we find G30.9, we would look around the code to see if there's any instructional notations that we need to follow. Let's look at an example of some instructional notes we might see in the tabular. If we open up our book to G30.9, our Alzheimer's disease code, we'll see notes that say to use an additional code to identify another condition if it exists. Remember, ICD-10 CM diagnosis codes can have up to seven characters. As the coder, you must always verify your code in the tabular list to see if an additional character is needed. Let's review the steps in ICD-10-CM. We first find the main terms in our diagnostic statement for coding. We then locate those main terms in our alphabetical index, followed by finding the subterms under the main term in our index. Step four is to read instructions in the alphabetical index. Step five is to verify the code in the tabular. And step six is to look for those instructional notes in the tabular and read if anything else is needed. Step seven is to assign our code to the highest level of specificity, which means that we've included all the code characters necessary. Step eight is to review our scenario and make sure we've coded all the diagnoses that need to be reported. Okay, let's go through a scenario. In this scenario, we have a 13-year-old male being seen in the ER, and his diagnosis is acute otitis externa of the right ear. So what do we do with our scenario? Who can remember? We first look up our main term in the alphabetical index, which would be otitis, and then our subterms would be externa and acute. Here we can see H60.50. With our scenario example, we're going to go to the tabular and look at the code we found, which was H60.50. Once there, you see we have a lot of choices based on the laterality of the ear. What did our scenario say? Great job, everyone. We needed an additional character for the laterality, right? To show that it was the right ear where the infection was. Everyone should have H60.501. Great job. Now that you guys are all pros at this, 
let's practice with some scenarios. I'll give you a few minutes and then on the side, we'll discuss what the correct codes are. Way to practice, everyone. And here are the correct codes. Remember, the key to coding is practice. So please practice all of the exercises in your textbook and workbook. And check the answer keys I have given you in our class. Keep up the great work.